Well, hello and welcome to the UC Davis Energy Exchange webinar series. Today's webinar topic is software controlled software controller switch reluctance motors as a replacement for induction motors. Our speakers for today are Teresa Pistichini, engineering manager, and Kate Mand, R&D engineer at the Western Cooling Efficiency Center. Also with us today is Grant Wheeler. Grant is a research engineer at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Finally, Maya Aron is the Director of Special Projects for the Software Motor Company. I am Paul Fortunato, the Outreach Manager for WCEC and your host of today's webinar. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone who has joined the webinar is currently muted and is in listen-only mode. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your control panel. I'll bring them up during the presentation and we will also have 15 minutes for questions at the end. I will also provide a contact slide at the end of this webinar so that you may quickly get in touch with us. This webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to each of you. These webinars are a service provided by the collaborative efforts of the Energy and Efficiency Institute, Western Cooling Efficiency Center, California Lighting Technology Center, and the Center for Water Energy Efficiency. These webinars would not be possible without the continued support of all our affiliate partners. We want to thank you for supporting these efforts. You can read our latest newsletter um, at energy.ucdavis.edu slash newsletter. These newsletters offers a current, offer a current glimpse into the research events and notable happenings at each of the UC Davis Energy Research Centers. If you've not yet signed up for our newsletter, you can follow the link on the screen or send me a message with your email address in the question box, and I'll make sure you get registered. So before handing the reins over to our presenters, I wanted to briefly go over today's presentation format. First, we will have a brief technology overview, followed by a review of the RTU indoor blower testing done in both the lab and in the field by WCEC. Second, we will look at NREL's field tests on refrigeration, on refrigeration condenser fan motors. And finally, we will give you an update on the commercial availability of this particular solution. Today's topic, once again, is software controller switched reluctance motors as a replacement for induction motors. Um, and now let's first welcome Kate and Mandy. Kate? Let me move the computer over towards you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the software controlled switch reluctance motor. And just to give you a brief overview um, of this motor, uh, it comes in four different components. Um, there's the motor itself, uh, the motor controller, uh, the supervisor, um, and then SMC also provides cloud services uh, to monitor their motor. Uh, the testing that we've done here at WCEC only evaluated uh, the smart motor and the motor controller. To give you a little background, uh, the uh, most of commercial cooling in California is provided by uh, rooftop units or RTUs uh, that you can see in the uh, upper right. Uh, these uh, systems uh, typically have a fixed speed fan, um, so additional or so power savings can be achieved uh, by reducing uh, the fan speed when uh, the full fan flow is not needed. Um, the induction motors uh, are by design are uh, fixed speed motors. Um, and in recent years, uh, manufacturers have included VFDs uh, to allow the induction motor to operate at multiple speeds uh, when full, and flow is, full air flow is not required. Uh, for our testing uh, in the laboratory, uh, the baseline, uh, the high rotor pull uh, switch reluctance motor was compared to an induction motor that was controlled by a VFD. Um, and in the lab testing, uh, it was compared to a single, or in the field testing, my apologies, uh, it was compared to a single speed induction motor. To give you an overview of the two different motors, uh, the induction motor has three main components. Uh, the stator, uh, which is the stationary part, the rotor, which is the part in the middle that rotates, and the wire windings, which is what creates uh, the electromagnetic, electromagnetic poles uh, that cause the motor to rotate. Based on how induction motors are designed, uh, they are passively controlled by the frequency of the AC power supply to the system, uh, which dictates its rotational speed. To change its rotational speed, uh, a VFD is needed to change the frequency of the power. Um, and when you do this, 
uh, you cause the motor to operate uh, outside of its design condition and you add additional losses to the system um, by all the transistor switching in the VFD. The switch reluctance motor is different in that it operates on the principle of magnetic reluctance instead of induction. Uh, to do this, uh, the rotor uh, is made up of a uh, um, ferrous laminate material uh, that is better at conducting uh, magnetic reluctance than air. Um, so as uh, the coils around the stator are commutated, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the rotor itself rotates uh, to reduce the magnetic um, reluctance circuit uh, in the motor. To be able to achieve this, uh, the motor itself is actively controlled. Um, and because of that, the design itself uh, then is inherently a variable speed motor. Additionally, uh, with how the individual stator coils are commutated, uh, it, the process uh, sorry, uh, includes uh, less switching to get the motor to rotate, which for, uh, in turn gives you less losses uh, at the uh, inverter. So for the laboratory testing, uh, we compared a three horsepower high rotor pole switch reluctance motor to a high rotor pole, sorry, to a three horsepower induction motor plus VFD system. Uh, we tested in uh, on a benchtop dynamometer and in a laboratory RTU. For the benchtop dynamometer testing, uh, each motor was connected and uh, monitored over 42 different tests uh, where the power of the system, of the motor system was monitored as well as the torque and angular speed. In the laboratory testing, uh, each motor was installed uh, to control the indoor blower. Uh, the size system that was used in the lab was a 10-ton commercial RTU uh, that was originally spec to have a multi-speed air volume fan, uh, gas heat, um, and a refrigerant 410A. Uh, you can see on the upper right uh, the sensor, the instrumentation that we used and the general location of the sensors uh, through the experiment. Uh, for the testing, uh, each motor was installed uh, in the belt and pulley system, and the belt was tensioned to seven pounds force uh, prior to each motor testing, which was the manufacturer's spec. Uh, test for his, uh, the 21 tests that we conducted uh, was over uh, seven different fan speeds. Uh, and three fixed airflow resistances uh, that were determined based off of the external static pressure when the fan was operating at 100% speed. The performance of the high rotor pole switch reluctance motor uh, was compared to the induction motor uh, using the motor drive fan efficiency and the power intensity. So here are the results for the bench top lab testing. Uh, on the left is the results for the uh, power versus torque of the benchtop testing. And on the right, we have the motor drive efficiency. It is clear uh, from these results that the high rotor pulse switch reluctance motor used less power to generate the same torque and therefore had a higher operating efficiency at all test points measured. Uh, you can see here that the power reduction was measured uh, ranging between uh, 9 and 36%. Uh, depending on the RPM uh, range that the motor was being tested at. Uh, both motors had a very a comparable uh, power factor uh, that increased as the speed of the motor increased. And you can see that it ranged between 0.46 to 0.68 for the switch reluctance motor and 0.42 and 0.67 uh, for the induction motor. For the lab RTU testing, uh, we have power intensity on the left and motor fan drive efficiency on the right. And again, you can see uh, that in all cases, the switch reluctance motor uh, had a lower uh, power intensity um, and a higher fan motor drive efficiency um, over all test points measured. Uh, the power intensity over each test uh, ranged between uh, 10 and 36% um, improvement over the baseline. I will now pass it over to Teresa to talk to you about the field test. Okay, so uh, after we completed the lab testing, we did a field test on a big box retail store in Corona, California. We selected one RTU um, on the store. 
the field test was done over 10 months from November 2017 to August 2018. Um, in this test, we replaced the three horsepower induction motor, which was single speed with the, uh, the uh, SRM motor. And we did performance monitoring in two phases. First, we, when we replaced the induction motor with the SMC motor, we ran the SMC motor at uh, a fixed speed equal to the induction motor. And then we added variable speed capability using the um, SMC's recommended speeds for ventilation and heating and cooling. Um, uh, airflow over the course of the test was highly variable um, as the filter loaded. And so in order to monitor the performance of the motor over the course of the test, we created an airflow map where we continuously monitor differential pressure between the uh, return air and the supply air. And then we measured, we correlated that differential pressure to um, airflow using a tracer gas uh, CO2 measurement system. So we basically did a one-time correlation and then continuous monitoring of differential pressure. And you can see that airflow map um, on here. Okay, so these are our results from the field testing. Um, so you can see on the left-hand side is just the measurement of, uh, of power uh, versus airflow. Um, and so you can see the, the power draw increased with increasing airflow and the, um, for the fixed speed, so both motors operating at 1725 RPM, the power draw of the uh, SMC motor was on average 15% lower than the induction motor. Uh, then we added the variable speed capability. So we had uh, two different speeds. We had uh, ventilation mode, which was 690 RPM, and then um, heating and cooling, right? Was Heating and cooling was reduced to 1294 RPM instead of 1725. Um, and you can see the reduction in power um, from those for the for the ventilation mode. The reduction in power was very significant, um, less you know, less than a 0.2, less than 200 watts. Uh, we also calculated the power intensity, uh, so watts per CFM delivered. I um, mean, you can see that over here on the right hand side. So the at full speed, the SMC motor uh, reduced the power intensity by 11%. Um, so we took our field test results and we tried to calculate some annualized savings estimates for, uh, the SM, for the SMC motor in, for this application, but for, uh, like the average RTU in Southern California Edison territory, um, uh, since Southern California Edison funded this, this field test. So we assume around about, we assume 5,000 hours of annual ventilation, which is 14 hours a day, seven days per week. That's our assumption for a retail store type application. Obviously other end uses would be different. Um, and then we assume 2,371 hours are actually heating and cooling. And that uh, metric comes from the California end use survey. Um, and so using those numbers, we calculate that the SRM motor uh, would save 50% compared to a fixed speed induction motor, and it would save 11% compared to an induction motor with a VFD. So actual energy savings for any particular application would be based on a function of motor size, uh, external static pressure, and the number of ventilation and heating and cooling hours. But this gives us you know, an idea of, of what we could expect. And just wanted to acknowledge that the work we presented here was funded by uh, Southern California Edison. Okay, so now we're going to uh, pass the presentation over to Greg Wheeler, Grant Wheeler, excuse me, at NREL. Yeah, thanks, Teresa. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear me. I'm going to go ahead and get into presentation mode here. Just a sec.
Can everyone see my screen? All right, not hearing anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that everyone can see my presentation, which is on the field demonstration of an HRSR motor, which WCEC has already been talking about. Uh, they talked about when doing a retrofit on rooftop units, what I am going to talk about is talking about supermarkets and specifically the condensers up above on those those cargos. Uh, and in the picture on the left, you can actually see uh, the condenser for a Walmart site. Uh, Walmart collaborated with uh, NREL and with SMC in this field demonstration. So this gives a, a better picture in the bottom left. You can actually see our plan for retrofitting. What we did is we replaced half of the induction motors with the HRSR motor. And in the bottom right, you can see just a kind of a quick comparison of these two motors. The HRSR motor was a 1.5 horsepower motor, 93% nameplate efficiency, and the induction motor was a 1.5 horsepower motor as well at around 73% uh, efficiency. Key thing to note here is that the induction motors actually did have a VFD, so they were modulating their speed and SMC, the, the HRSR motors, uh, had that capability as well. So what we did here is we just took a, a signal wire from the VFD and we sent it to all the SMC motors. So they modulated in time with the induction motors. In this case, we had nine SMC motors, nine HRSR motors, and nine induction motors. And onto our approach, what we originally did is we tried to run all the motors following the speed signal from that legacy VFD, as I explained but we had some issues because the, the speed signal changed rapidly and, and it was difficult to verify all the motors were running at the same uh, speed. So we went on to our second uh, option here, which was that we ran all the motors at the same speed for 60 minute intervals, running from five hertz up to 60 hertz, uh, which correlates to about 200 RPM up to 870 RPM. And from that, we were able to create a correlation. So we understood the power consumption of the motor, whether it was induction or HRSR motor, and the RPM. Uh, and then we used the third step, which we just looked at the historical data for a baseline and then calculated any of our energy efficiency measures. We also evaluated several different control strategies, and I'm going to go over those real quickly. Uh, one control strategy that happens often in, in a condenser, as, as this one in a supermarket, is constant fan speed control, which is where these motors are just running at a constant speed. In this case, they're running at around 870 RPM for all those induction motors. Uh, regardless of temperature or conditions in the store. Uh, and to be clear in here, uh, that was actually a modeled condition for us. That is not what the store in the field actually ran. The store in the field ran what is known as variable head pressure control, which is where the motor speed is actually based as a function on the condenser saturated temperature and on the outdoor air temperature. So this uh, control strategy actually modulates that uh, motor speed and, and reduces the, the fan speed from 870 RPM when it's not needed. Uh, and, and this is the one that we actually measured. So Walmart actually has this installed and they use variable head pressure control in this particular store. Uh, as we mentioned though, we had some issues with looking at the, uh, the, ensuring that both speeds were the exact same for both motors. So we had to calculate the energy efficiency measure. Another key point to talk about is that we did look at low temperature controls for Walmart and we implemented those for both the constant fan speed control and the variable head pressure control. Uh, I'm not gonna go into detail on this presentation because we don't have the time, but that was definitely something that we looked into and, and is something that's important in a lot of supermarkets and in refrigeration. So we evaluated four different scenarios uh, and what we changed is we, we, we looked at, uh, of course, for the baseline motor, it was all induction motors but we changed the control strategy. Strategy one being just a direct comparison between constant fan speed control. Scenario two being a, a, a comparison between variable head pressure control. And then scenario three and scenario four is looking at how much benefit do you gain from switching from a constant fan speed control over to variable head pressure control uh, with just an induction, and then how much energy do you save additionally by adding this HRSR motor. And now we're just getting into the results real quick. Uh, we did notice some qualitative results that we wanted to discuss real quickly. Uh, and, and that is that uh, the installation was, was relatively straightforward. Walmart did make a suggestion on 
if there were a way to add, combine the integrated drive and the motor so it was more similar or analogous to an ECM where you just have to install one component, that would be really helpful. So it, as uh, Caitlin described earlier on in the presentation, there's three components to an HRSR motor. There is the motor itself, the integrated drive or the controller, and then the supervisor. And we used all three of those components. So that does add slightly to the installation cost. But in general, there were no uh, issues with SMC motor. And actually, the picture in the bottom right uh, illustrates an example of the situation that happened uh, in the field. If you can see there, there's actually a piece of foam that jammed the fan and stopped it from running. Um, SMC, with their cloud capabilities, were able to actually go in there and actually remotely shut this motor down to prevent further damage. And then on to some of the quantitative results. One thing we did look at, since we were able to look at power versus RPM, we were able to see uh, what was the percent savings across the RPM range. And what we noticed is that there was a larger savings at lower RPM. This is something we had expected because um, in, in general, what we've heard about HRSRMs is that they are more efficient at lower speeds. And we were able to, 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 to prove that out for this particular scenario. Uh, the table on the right actually just goes through a couple different RPMs. Uh, so you can see at around 200 RPMs, we saw a 53% difference in power consumption between the two motors. And then all the way up to 870 RPMs, where we saw about a 29% difference in power savings. And then finally, onto our annual energy savings uh, based on scenarios. So in your first column, you can see the baseline energy in a kilowatt hour per motor. And then you can see the energy efficiency measure for all the way from scenario one up to scenario four. And then finally, the savings and percent savings. And I'm just going to go over the percent savings real quick. Uh, first off, you can see that just in general, ignoring the control strategies, that the HRSR motor does save energy, anywhere from 29 to 33% energy uh, for this particular site and with these particular motors. Um, one thing we also have already talked about is that that 4% difference, the increase in efficiency, is likely due to better percent savings at lower motor speeds. So scenario two was evaluating both the induction and HRSR motor in a variable head pressure control strategy, which is where your motor is modulating its RPM. Then finally, scenario three and scenario four are discussing when you change your control strategies and, and seeing at those energy savings. So off the bat, we see that switching to, from constant fan speed to variable head pressure control does save energy. And the best case is when you combine switching to variable head pressure control and adding your HRSR motor that's going to provide your most significant savings of around 71%. At this point, though, I do want to add a caveat. This is analysis that you see in front of you is all based on the condenser alone. And when you are switching between constant fan speed and variable head pressure control, you should realize that there's going to be uh, potentially some increased compressor energy consumption uh, because your, your condenser fans are not going to be running as much. So there is, from a net perspective, that is an analysis that we need to do in the future. And finally, just some acknowledgments. Uh, this was a this funding was provided by DOE's High Impact Technology Catalyst Program. We uh, want to send out a special thank you to Walmart and Vacom for their work on this project. Walmart provided the site, and Vacom was uh, installed a lot of the sensors and uh, counseled the authors as well for this project. This report uh, will be in a much more detailed version. Will be provided through the NREL website uh, and published in May 2019. So, Teresa, were we switching over to someone? Teresa, can you um, can you please put on the slide of the commercial availability? So. Okay, um, apologies, having technical difficulties with GoToWebinar. We are back. Um, we're gonna um, we're gonna get to you, Maya. Um, just give us a second um, because Katen's gonna go over a result summary first, and then uh, we will get to that slide. Great. There it is. There we go. 
All right, just to summarize uh, the results that you saw from WCEC and NREL, um, there were uh, two different tests, one looking at RT, uh, RTU indoor blower, um, the second looking at uh, refrigeration condenser fans. Uh, in both uh, tests, the baseline motor efficiency uh, was slightly different and the normal operating uh, range for the uh, each motor um, was also summarized here. So this table just gives you an overall result um, of what the baseline efficiency was, uh, what the RPM of the baseline motors were, uh, the measured power reduction, and then the estimated energy savings based off of those uh, power reduction numbers. And at this point, uh, we'll pass it over to Maya to give you an update on the commercial availability uh, for the SMC motors. Um, I'd like to start off in saying uh, thank you very much, WCC and NREL, for putting this together. Um, so. SMC uh, is going to market through two channels, uh, OEM and retrofit. Um, both are uh, with the same uh, product line. Uh, we are working with uh, various OEM partners in HVAC and agriculture, mainly around um, uh, exhaust fan applications and uh, major KPIs for that would be, you know, maximizing CFM per wattage, uh, IoT controls implementation, and uh, shifting to direct drive, so elimination of uh, belts and gearbox. Uh, on the retrofit side, we are mainly targeting RTU air handling units, exhaust fans, and specifically retail, supermarket, uh, higher education, and other ty types of uh, buildings. Um, current product line is made for retrofit, so it really supports uh, integration in, with analog controls, backnet, and features standard NEMA frame sizes for drop-in replacements. Um, and we also offer advanced RTU controls like uh, advanced digital economizer control, demand control ventilations for RTUs, uh, as discussed uh, in this webinar. Uh, current available horsepower range would be 1 to 10 horse. Um, in the near future, uh, just following up on uh, kind of maybe Grant's um, comment on uh, integrated electronics. In the near future, we would be able to supply one uh, larger horsepower range. So we're gonna go into uh, 15 and 20 horsepower. Uh, and we are also working on uh, making uh, or developing a uh, integrated electronics motor that would have that control motor controller on the back of the motor that would kind of look more like um, the ECM offering specifically for refrigeration condensers. And that would be about uh, between half quarter, half horsepower motor and two horsepower motor. So that's kind of uh, looking at uh, the end of this year and what we would be able to provide. Great. Thanks, Maya. So I think at that point, um, we are going to uh, open it up to questions. Um, it looks like we have one. Uh, to start with, from Chad Olson, um, he's asking, uh, did either UC Davis or NREL experience differences in the sound profile of the different motor over the various speed ranges? Um, I'll start with um, Caitlin. Do you, we'll start with you, and then we'll move to Grant on that. Uh, for So for our testing, uh, we didn't do anything to quantify the sound profile um, uh, in either the RT or the benchtop testing. Uh, so Grant, was that part of your testing at all? So we never actually quantified the sound difference, uh, and from a qualitative perspective, uh, no one at the NREL site saw any difference. Great. Do you want to say something? I mean, I just want to clarify that too. Is that you know, of course, when you're looking at a condenser, it's it's pretty loud already. So. <laughs> uh, so I can speak to the qualitative measure as well. Um, in the laboratory testing, uh, we did notice a difference in sound uh, during the bench top. Um, but again, when it's in the motor system, when it's in the RTU, uh, the sound of air moving um, can dampen it out. And in the field testing, uh, we had no um, complaints or anything uh, from the Walmart store about and change in noise. I think that that's a, definitely an area for future research is to quantify um, to quantify the the noise profile. Okay, uh, next question uh, by Brian Youngers. Uh, can Maya provide any details of incremental cost difference between an induction and the SMC motors? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, overall, it's SMC motors, uh, when you look at all the components, uh, depending on the application, 
it would kind of look like a, a motor and a VFD, just you know, kind of bringing it uh, to very simplifying things. Um, looking at a NEMA premium motor and um, a good quality VFD, uh, it would be not very different. Um, but I mean, bottom line is SMC is targeting a, a three or sub three year ROI. And that is how we uh, reach uh, or uh, make a, a financial case for the 100% of our jobs, if that helps you. Great. Um, Phil Jordan um, asks, you know, will the raw data used to generate the charts presented here be made available to the public? Uh, for WCEC, it, we can provide that upon request. Um, do we provide a, we have the reports here, but do we have a, the contact? Yeah, we we do? Where is it? Oh, here you go. <laughs> um, so yes, feel free to, this is Teresa, feel free to email me and we can, we can get you that. We have no problem sharing that, but we don't have it posted publicly anywhere. Um, and Grant, do you, what's your perspective on that? Yeah, so from NREL's perspective, we'll, we'll have a, a much more detailed report, around a 50-page report that's going to be published. If you want more information than that, uh, just please email me and we'll, we'll handle that on a case-by-case -case basis. Great. Uh, next question, uh, power factor at various speeds and loads? Oh, uh, if you go to our detailed report um, at WCEC, we have power factor data in there uh, for the benchtop dynamometer testing. Um, the end the end story is is that the differences were very small. Um, and uh, I think I think there might have been a statement on one of the slides. But anyway, the differences the differences were very small and in some cases the the uh, SMC motor was slightly better. In some cases the induction motor was slightly better, but it's it's uh, it's negligible. Grant, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, I, we didn't have any analysis on on power factors. Okay. Yeah, yeah there's very detailed plots in our um, in our report, that first report that's referenced. Okay. How is the efficiency of SR motors compared to the efficiency of EC motors? Uh, we don't have any analysis here comparing an induction motor to an ECM motor. Um, I think one of the issues is generally ECM motors are smaller horsepower motors. Uh, smaller and then also slightly more expensive because they have a permanent magnet uh, in the rotor, uh, whereas the uh, high, ro high rotor pole SRM just uses uh, ferrous material. Yeah, we don't have any analysis of that here to show you today. Um, does anybody, other, any, anyone else have any comments on that? Grant or Maya? This is Grant. Uh, no, I do not. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, for Grant, uh, what does HRSR stand for again? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so high rotor pull switch reluctance motor. We apologize and we're using so, multiple acronyms today. <laughs> so, yes, there are multiple acronyms to, that mean, all mean the same thing. Um, so, okay, is there any word yeah. from, S, from SCE, Southern California Edison, on an LCR program to promote these motors? LCR. I assume that's, I assume that's a rebate program. I'm sorry, I don't know what the acronym LCR means. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we have anybody from SCE on the line, but we can follow up with them and ask for a status on that. Um, yeah, I just don't know. Uh, actually, Maya, do you know anything about that? If there are any uh, utility programs on the horizon or existing? Yeah, so SMC has a, um, a utility team in-house working with, um, with various utilities around uh, rebates and incentive programs. Uh, we do have some in place already with uh, Excel, with um, PG&E. Uh, there is definitely a conversation with uh, other utilities, as mentioned. And uh, anybody that wants to get more information, I'd gladly be able to give him a full list um, upon request. We have SMCs. Oh, yeah, Maya's email is here, too. 
And for anyone who's curious what LCR stands for, Phil uh, did uh, tell us what it is. It's local consumption reduction. Uh, next question. Uh, do you do tests on occupied space HVAC in an office, school, medical lab environment? Did you? Sorry. Oh, did we do did tests? We? I was like, sure we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, all of the field tests, um, all the field tests shown here were all done on a Walmart store, different Walmart stores. The, 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 the UC Davis study was on one Walmart store and the refrigeration study was on another. Um, but no, it was retail for that particular application. Um, I assume that SMC has products installed in those other types of environments, Maya? Yes, we do. Uh, we have multiple case studies uh, for office, um, retail, supermarket retail. Uh, we're working on a bunch of uh, fast food uh, opportunities, and we have case studies for that as well. Uh, so there are various. Uh, they can be found on the SMC website, uh, softwaremotor.com. And uh, again, any additional information I'd love to share, but there are a few case studies um, available for download on our website for office as well. Great. Uh, what are SMC's recommended speeds for each RTU mode, heating, ventilation, and cooling? Uh, I imagine that's application specific. Uh, for our for our study, we uh, uh, for our study. Uh, so we had a two stage RTU. So the second stage, heating and cooling, um, had a hundred percent flow. Uh, stage one, cooling and heating was reduced to seventy five percent, and then ventilation was uh, forty percent. And that was based off of RP, uh, the RPM of the motor. Okay. Okay. So, yep. Go ahead, Grant. I was just going to say, this is Grant, and, and um, this is not part of this webinar, but we also did a, an innovation incubator uh, project, which was through Wells Fargo Foundation, specifically with SMC on working on uh, a, using variable speed applications for, for rooftop units. So um, just something to note that that will potentially be going out to the public at some point as well. And that would get at the speeds for cooling, heating, and ventilating. Okay. Great. Um, if there aren't any more questions, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it open for a minute just to see if anyone else has anything to ask. Uh, looks like we have another one. How does this software control differentiate from other solutions products in the market? Um, not specifically sure what other solution or product you're referring to, but what we're comparing here, uh, what we're comparing to here is adding a VFD to the induction motor. There are lots of different VFD products out there and various sort of control solutions to interface with VFDs. Um, so it's, so it's possible to achieve variable speed control. Um, in a similar way, uh, I think what's unique with uh, SMC motor is the the higher efficiency motor technology combined with the control software um, in one solution. I don't, Maya, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so um, SMC is a system is actually the first programmable motor out there. So that's really the difference um, between uh, taking a, a induction motor that is programmed uh, to be uh, full efficiency at peak and um, actually using uh, software uh, to drive the motor uh, system. So, I mean, it, it is it is a very, very different system design that is uh, based on, it's a software-driven motor overall. Um, and any any additional information I'd love to share with uh, specific people about, you know, how the system works and, and the technical details behind that but it but you know overall we're talking about a, a software driven or pro totally programmable motor uh, there is nothing like that out there great thanks Maya um, another question uh, are there other providers of this motor solution available or other motor solutions available to reduce motor energy draw um. I, we're not aware of at, at WCEC anything similar. Um, I, 
add, add, is there any other comments on that? Uh, this is Grant from NREL. Uh, just to be clear, so SRMs, when you talk about switch reluctance motors, those have been in the field for, for years, and they're, they're typically for different applications. They've never really gotten into HVAC um, due to their, their reliability and other things. They're, they're really good for those applications for like nuclear reactors. But HRSRMs is a patented technology to my knowledge, and there's only one vendor. And then part two of that question was, the, are there other technologies for energy savings for motors? There, there's a, a lot. There's a whole different versions of, of ECM or inductions and VFDs. Um, in this case, we're only looking at induction motors and induction motors plus VFDs as a comparison. Great. Um, well, I want to I want to thank everyone for coming today. Um, and uh, just a reminder again that we will send you um, an email uh, with uh, both uh, the video links to this webinar, contact information of all of our presenters, um, and also we will be sending out a uh, a brief survey um, to help better uh, to better to better serve uh, our audience um, in, in these types of webinars, um, as this is the first uh, of what is hopefully a long uh, long relationship and journey. Uh, with the Energy Exchange UC Davis webinar series. Um, so thanks again for joining us today, um, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.